Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. It's February 5th, 2024. In my favorites folder here on YouTube is Must See Film. This is classic stuff. This is masterpiece stuff. This is a guy on his game taking us places that we rarely go. That guy's Joshua Buatzi, <clears throat> and he's fighting a puncher, Dan Aziz, a tough guy, a guy who's come up the hard way in boxing, right? He's fighting Dan Aziz. Aziz is trying to hunt him down. Aziz wants a stoppage. And just understand, this film of Buatzi's masterpiece against Dan Aziz could easily be called How to Fight from the Pocket. Folks, it's that good. This is a pocket fest. If you're someone who likes veteran fighters, who know what to do up close, if you're a Roberto Duran fan, if you want to see a guy who is a taller man, but yet he knows how to be in the pocket, up close to the opponent, Right? He's not dancing. He's not even jabbing his way into the pocket. Right? He's in front of his opponent. But his opponent can't find his head. This is the fight to look at. Let's talk about it. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, full disclosure here, I lost on this fight. I thought it was going to be high action, right? I thought there were dynamics here. Both guys are British. Both guys run in the same social circles. I thought there were dynamics here that would make this be combustible. But the bet I picked was the under 10 and a half rounds. I got good odds on that bet. I thought, wow, how could the casino be this stupid? Well, you know what they say when you're playing cards, right? If you're at the poker table and you don't know who the fool is at the table, you're the fool, right? I lost on this bet. Both of these guys just had too much heart for either of them to stay down before the midway point of the 11th round. So I got the shootout I wanted. Lord knows this fight is high action. But these guys had too much courage for... Gamblers like me to win on the under. So let me tip my hat to both guys. Let me just say, though, <clears throat> it's all here on film. This is how you fight from the pocket. This is really good stuff. Understand, Buatzi is the taller man. Does he jab his way into the pocket against Aziz, who has a 60-something percent KO ratio? In other words, Aziz isn't there to put on a song and dance act. He's not dancing on his back foot, hoping the judges are generous. No, no, he's in there looking for action. How do you have a guy in there looking for action like Aziz, who's ready to trade? How could you be the taller man? And how could you decide then to be in the pocket Right? Buatzi's entering the pocket throwing power shots, folks. He's throwing hooks. He's not even trying to dupe Aziz into when he's coming into the pocket. No, the deception comes from the fact that the taller man has decided to go to Aziz's body. The deception comes from the fact that the taller man who has spectacular, that's the word, head movement, knows how to roll with punches, right? Clearly Aziz can see his opponent, but when he goes to throw a punch, Buatzi can lean away from the punch. Buatzi knows how to stick his other hand up to block the punch. This is as Buatzi is throwing hook combinations to Aziz's body. So you have the taller man here, bent at the waist, the bend 
denies Aziz access to Buatsi's body. Buatsi, the taller man, has figured out that he's the more limber man, that he's the better athlete, that he has the faster hands. So Buatsi is doing something that I haven't seen a lot of guys in the sport do. I've seen Chris Eubank do it, but Buatsi is banking on sequencing. In other words, he comes in, he knows Aziz doesn't know which hand he's going to hit him with because Buatsi is two-handed. Right? Buatsi gets two knockdowns off of right hands. It's clear that Buatsi's right hand is explosive. But that's not going to stop him from leading with left hooks. And, of course, it's not completely obvious because he has his body contorted in a way where he's bent low. So Aziz doesn't know what he's throwing. When Buatsi leads with the left hook, and Aziz, who's trying to land a chopping counter right hand, right? When Aziz starts to throw that right hand, you'll notice Buatsi's already prepared for it. He not only is leaning his head away from Aziz's right hand coming back, but he's throwing his own right hand, having led with the left to Aziz's body. Right, folks, it's, it's spectacular stuff. And understand, I'm not talking about moments in the fight. No, Buatsi is spectacular every round. This is the guy with the high skill level in the pocket to actually stay in the pocket and to exchange and to move and to be active going to a slugger's body. Now let's talk about the mistakes Aziz made because understand there are two sides of the coin here. It's a competitive fight. But let me just say this. You have a guy who's showing mastery in the pocket. You're having a hard time finding his head. The guy is two-handed. The guy knows how to roll with punches, right? So he's not stiff. This is a guy who's left, who's right, who's throwing punches, who's coming up top on occasion, right? But the body attack is really the linchpin of what Buatzi's doing. So you're Aziz. I believe Aziz should have channeled Anthony Yard's fight against Lyndon Arthur, the rematch. And he should have said, man, this guy is giving me too much of a problem in the pocket. I can't land my jab because the guy has too much head movement, right? His head's not there for me to jab. So what I have to do now is I've got to take a step forward, and I've got to try to clinch him. I've got to drag us to the mud, because as long as we're on the main road, this guy's a better inside fighter than I am. Right? I can't hang with this guy in the pocket. I've got to smother what he's doing. I've got to make this a wrestling match. Aziz doesn't do that. What he does is he spends several rounds trying to figure out what Buatzi's doing. He's hoping Buatzi, who is bending low, and keep in mind, this is not Isaac Cruz. This is the taller man in the fight. I believe Aziz thought that sooner or later Buatzi was going to straighten up. He doesn't. So you get a great fight, right? Aziz doesn't come in and try to clinch and rough up Buatzi. Doesn't come in and try to smother Buatzi's shots. In other words, some guy's moving his head too much for you to hit it. Why not just go grab him by the shoulders? Right? Frustrate the guy. 
Let the guy know, hey, you come inside to rough me up. I'm going to grab you. I'm going to throw off your timing. Let me say, too, Buatsi is leaning down so low, right? He's the better athlete. His body's much more limber than Aziz. He's so low that you just thought, man, Aziz needs to start throwing uppercuts. Right? Tim Zhu throws a great uppercut. And Tim Zhu, unlike Buatsi, stands relatively upright in most fights. Right? But Tim Zhu understands that when a guy tries to exploit that, by coming in low, which is what Buatzi does here at 175. Tim Zhu, of course, is a champ at 154. Right? You've got to blow him out of the pocket. Folks, if you let Buatzi stay in the pocket, going to your body, moving his head so you can't hit him in the head, Having the sequencing down so he could hit you with the left hand, roll away from your counter right hand, hit you with his own right hand, then pull the hand back to block your counter left hand, right? If you understand that Buatzi's sequencing is spectacular, you've got to find a way to get him off his spot. You cannot have him operating like this in the pocket round after round. Eventually, he's going to chop you down. The second knockdown is dramatic. Aziz hits the canvas face first. Right, let me also make another point too. Buatzi doesn't need a lot of room to throw that right hand. Right, he can throw tight hooks. The knockdowns don't even look like long punches. So, I applaud both men. I thought Aziz came to de you know, came to fight. Right, he was here. He was ready for the music. He was gonna hold his own. But his punches were longer than Buatzi's. Buatzi, better athlete, was able to get low hide his own body behind bending at the waist and was able to throw a volume of shots to Aziz's body. Eventually, Aziz's body gave out. Let me also say, too, you know, Buatzi, just like Danny Garcia, he starts to throw a hook. You don't know if it's going to your body or your head. Right here, he focused on Aziz's body. But he did come up top. The two knockdowns are headshots. Right? This is how a guy who knows what he's doing in the pocket can do. Right? He took the jab right off of Aziz's shoulder. Right? There's just, just look at Buatzi's head movement. There's too much head movement. Even with a guy he sparred with. There's too much head movement for Aziz to hit him in the head. Right? Aziz needed to grab, twist, throw uppercuts, lean on him, maybe even come in with elbows. Right? Don't tell the officials in boxing I said that. Because in a clean fight, where it's two guys in the pocket, both trying to be alpha, without a lot of clinching, we found out that Buatzi is the guy with the advantage. Now, what does this mean? Let me just say this, folks. The neighborhood is tough. Around 168 and 175. Right? We're going to get a little bit of thinning. Um, you have Baturbia fighting Bevel in what could be the fight of the year. Right? We're going to get some thinning. Here's the problem. Buatzi, after the fight, said, hey, I want to fight Anthony Yard. Look, I think Buatzi has a lot of skills. But boxing is rock, paper, scissors. Anthony Yard, especially after losing the first Lyndon Arthur fight, 
understands that he can't stand in the pocket and let another guy control him with a jab or what have you. So Anthony Yard would be able to take a step forward and do some roughhousing tactics. Right? You have to force Buatsi onto his back foot. That's a must. Let me also say this too. As hard as Aziz punches, recognize a blessed puncher when you see one. Anthony Yard is blessed. He's a heavy puncher. Right? That's a tough fight. If I were Buatsi, if I were if I were giving advice to Buatsi, I would say, hey player, you're in line for a shot at the belt. Don't pull a Joe Joyce here. Think about a payday and then find yourself on the canvas. Right? If I were Buatsi, I'd try to get the belt. Right? I would not waste a second fighting a tough opponent, although I'll concede that would be a big paying fight. Right? Let me also say, too, I have my doubts on David Benavides staying at 168. Eventually, he's going to come to 175. He's also a master in the pocket. Right? I sense that Buatzi, though, is the better athlete than David Benavides. Right? I've watched Buatzi fights. I was surprised with his skill level deep in the pocket here because I've watched Buatzi fights where he stays outside. Right? This, you know, I didn't realize he had this Roberto Duran. And let's be clear here. We're talking about younger Duran. You and I know as Duran gained weight, he's outside in some of his later fights. That Iran Barkley fight. I encourage people to look at Duran Aran Barkley. Right? Duran's outside in that fight, wrecking havoc. Well, here, Buatzi, this was new to me. Seeing Buatzi inside, not even throwing jabs. Right? Inside, you know, bent at the waist, slugging it out with a guy who couldn't handle Buatzi's shots to the body. Right? I haven't seen the guy who has successfully done that against David Benavides. Right? Let's just say Buatzi Benavides, that's a blockbuster fight, but there again, if I'm Buatzi, get the ring first. You're in line for a title shot, take the title shot. Right again, don't you think Joe Joyce would have been better off fighting for the heavyweight title than fighting Jili Zhang? Right? If you want the big the biggest paydays possible, get the title, then enter the ring as champion against an Anthony Yard or a David Benavides. Right? Let me say this too. You have other intriguing guys out there. Right? David Morale, folks, he is brutal. Let me say also. Another guy who's great in the pocket is Canelo. Now, I don't know what Canelo's going to do. Canelo might fight Jamal Charlo and stuff like that. But understand how different this fight would have been if Aziz was Canelo. Right, folks? Canelo is a master in the pocket. Canelo a little bit different than Buatzi, right? Uh, Buatzi's taller. It's very hard to get underneath Canelo, who's really 5'7 and a half. Right? It's very hard to fight low and to have a lot of success against Canelo. And as I've said here for years, Canelo's a little bit deceptive. Right? He has the, you know, female friendly nickname, right? Canelo, which means cinnamon. His facial expressions, he has a friendly looking face and stuff like that. Folks, he used to spar with Frank Sanchez, the heavyweight. Canelo is one of the hardest punchers in the sport. Think about how that Kovalev fight ended, and Kovalev was a champ at 175. Right? If Buatzi were to fight this style against Canelo, folks, who knows how that fight would turn out? Right? Let's just say I haven't seen a lot of guys have a lot of success deep in the pocket against Canelo. 
right? Look at the uh, Mr. Robot fight, uh, Avni Yildirim fight against Canelo, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Understand, Golovkin is a guy who likes to have a cushion between himself and an opponent, right? Golovkin has ring coverage. A lot of his success against Canelo came from hard punches thrown from distance. If you're up close to Canelo, you're going to have problems. Are you listening, Jaime Munguia? Well, anyway, kudos to Buatzi. Great fight. Uh, I just wish the fight didn't make it to the midway point of the 11th round, but you're going to lose some of these bets. For the record, too, I also had Conor Ben by KO, and that fight went the distance. <laughs> I just rough weekend for me. But let's say um, watching this fight was a joy. Buatzi is a technician in the pocket. Folks, if you want to see how to fight from the pocket, this is one of the films to look at. Aziz, before this fight, I didn't know who was going to win it. Aziz is major competition. But he couldn't handle the inside work of Buatzi. Look at the body shots. Look at the volume. Look at the defensive mindfulness. Look at how he's fighting low. Bent at the waist. Right? This is highly technical stuff. This is great stuff from the pocket. That's the fight I saw. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this YouTube video. The video of the fight, at least the highlights, a couple of, couple of those videos are in my favorites folder here on YouTube. Thanks for stopping by.